All right. Uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. We're going to talk Q3 uh, results for Amazon advertising. And a quick agenda today, we're gonna do key takeaways, Q3 results, Prime Day results and insights, and then a quick tips for the upcoming holidays based on what we've learned. I'm really honored to be here today with Carrie Masters, who's the founder of Bobsled Marketing, and uh, which is a, an amazing Amazon agency. Um, in addition to other platforms, Carrie, do you wanna introduce yourself and say anything about your firm? Sure, great. Thanks, Melissa. Really happy to be here with everyone today. Um, so Bobsled Marketing is an Amazon-focused digital agency. We've been working with Amazon for, for five years. Uh, we sort of span the spectrum across operations, organic marketing, and advertising um, managed services with a, a couple of recent additions with Walmart and Instacart. And we're a very proud partner of, of PackView as well on the advertising technology side of things. Awesome. And you also have a podcast that I listen to a lot. So if you want to check it out, it's called the e-commerce brain trust, right? That's right. Yep. That's right. Okay. Um, so glad that you're here today to hear your findings. If anyone's wondering, yes, I have taped together my headset. It just fell apart <laughs> right before this, um, kind of mouth wardrobe malfunction, if you will, for virtual conferencing. Um, but we're going to get through it. Uh, so we also have Matt and Riku who are going to be speaking a little bit later in the presentation uh, about kind of holiday findings. Um, these guys are the best. So they have a lot of good things to say. So hold on for that conversation. But without further ado, we're going to start talking about Q Q3. So according to this McKinsey study, uh, we saw that during COVID, there were a lot of new behaviors that have formed from people first time grocery shopping to trying new brands. Uh, Kira, do you have any thoughts on how, you know, are these things here to stay? Are these behaviors sticking and what this means for brands? Yeah, I think that thematically through 2020, we saw just a the, the world go crazy in, in Q2 and some normalizing behavior starting to occur in Q3 where um, people ha had a little bit more of an expect an understanding how, of how online shopping worked, how buy online pick up in store worked. And so we just started to see a bit more normalizing of both shopping behaviors and the response from brands as well. Um, as an agency, we saw uh, a lot of concern and confusion from, from, clients in uh, Q2 around how, what this was going to mean for their business. But by Q3, a little bit more normalcy had returned both on the, on the advertiser side and for brands as well. So at, as this chart kind of shows, a lot of trialing activity from, um, from shoppers and the smart brands were there to capture brand switches and so across a lot of our clients in consumable categories, we saw both their new to brand views and purchases increasing during Q3. And so that, you know, this is a game of basically stay in stock, stay the course with marketing and advertising, which, you know, especially around all of the fulfillment challenges that we had in Q3 and non the classification of essential versus non-essential items, just staying in stock suddenly became this huge challenge that we might not have um, seen before. And then finally, what I know we're going to talk about Prime Day a little bit later in, in the event, but um, you know, a lot of uncertainty around Prime Day dates, an event that ordinarily would have occurred um, in early Q3. So there was a lot going on in Q3, but um, it, it, it's really it was really starting to, to normalize on the behavioral side for shoppers. Awesome. Speaking of Q3, so this is a webinar we're talking about Q3 performance and just to tee up the, the back to school season of what we saw, uh, you know, this is a, a Deloitte survey that was in an e-marketer report about how people were doing a lot more online shopping this back to school. Obviously, you know, stores were shut down or limiting capacity within stores. We, as we all know, Prime Day just happened uh, last week, um, instead of in July. So we're going to look at what that impact had to ad spend during Q3. 
And then also, you know, this was kind of like the winners and losers of some, some categories struggled like apparel, not a lot of people buying back to school mm. uh, apparel and then other categories doing well, like home office and uh, e-learning. And so kind of a winners and losers dichotomy. So one of the things that we always also like to talk about is what's new in ads. Uh, this is a conversation Kiri and I ha have, and it's it's actually really challenging to figure out all the new things that have happened in ads. And so thanks to her and her team for helping us um, come up with kind of what's important for you all to know that that happened. But basically, you know, Amazon continues in Q3 to focus on Amazon attribution. Uh, this is their way of um, measuring off Amazon uh, to Amazon uh, attribution. Also, sp sponsor brand video became available in the API, which uh, we have in our tools now. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of success with sponsor brand video. Uh, DSP, we're really uh, positive on DSP reporting and the ability to do read and write for DSP, which is coming. And then a couple other things is that uh, auto translated words updated in uh, EU marketplaces, which is important. So there's auto translation uh, from English to, to various languages because people you know, do a lot of things in EU, sales in EU and Amazon in US. That's been helpful. And then lastly, the sponsor brands now available in the detail page. Uh, that's mm. kind of significant. You know, I don't think that we're going to see much impact to Q3, but as things get into the detail pages, we do see impact to performance similar to when the sponsor brand ad first showed up right under the headline search toolbar. And then once it expanded its placements, the performance kind of suffered a little bit in terms of um, click through rates and conversion, obviously, because it's, you know, below the page or in detail pages. So we'll, we'll kind of be watching this trend. This happened in August, so we're not going to see it's too much noise right now. So <laughs> let's look at things to normalize. But those are kind of the, the new things and ads. Um, anything, anything to add here, Kiri? You, you obviously contribute a lot to this slide. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that we're, we're planning to do a little bit more recaps of, of features that have rolled out each quarter. So that'll be um, something to look forward to for everyone. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So now on to the numbers and the good stuff. So we're going to take a look at our Q3 CPC report. Uh, if you don't have it, you can go to our website and download it there. It's about a 12 page document that outlines all the numbers for this quarter. So be sure to, to download that. Uh, so just the key takeaways, ad spend grew in Q3, despite not having a prime day. Uh, the searches are still highly PPE focused, but we start seeing home office and gaming in Q3, but a little bit later than we normally would due to the pushback. The other really interesting thing is that CPCs bounce back from COVID impacts. So we saw, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of Q2 dips, especially people were out of stock and inventory and weren't advertising as much, especially the big guys. And so CPCs dropped, but we're seeing a normalization this quarter uh, with a jump of 20% back to a little bit normal levels. More advertisers are le leaning into sponsored brand ads and the placements are getting a little bit more expensive as a result. And then lastly, click-through rates continue to fall on Amazon, but there are some new ad types like the sponsor brand video um, that we're seeing early signs of success. So Q3 searches, these were kind of the top searches this quarter. This desk uh, only got two stars, but it's also only a $40 desk. So I don't know how much you can expect from that, but that was one of the top searched and per, uh, clicked on desks. Uh, this gaming chair, which my nine-year-old son certainly has taken, uh, I don't think he fits in that, but um, he definitely wants it. <laughs> And uh, this Acer laptop. So laptops, gaming chairs, desks, uh, this is kind of the theme of the quarter. And as you can see here in the data, uh, again, still PPE focused, uh, you know, here mm -hmm. with face masks and such, but we start seeing desks, laptops, gaming chairs. Uh, my daughter told me I need these blue light glasses because I keep squinting at my screen. Um, <laughs> anything interesting here, Kiri, that you want to add in terms of search behaviors and what this means? Yeah, so um, Stefan on my team does a really good job of uh, sharing out some trends from brand analytics each Monday on LinkedIn. And so it, we went back and had a look at what were the trends over the last uh, few months. And it's on a weekly basis, some variation of, of all of these. It's face masks, disinfectant, home exercise with 
uh, stretch band, uh, those um, workout bands, home office, home entertainment, Nintendo Switches, PlayStations, et cetera. So this, I think what this serves to illustrate for us is how quickly search behavior changes based on what's going on in the world and how important it is to stay current with what people are searching for and what needs they're looking to solve in their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm waiting for the dumbbells to come back. Can't find dumbbells anywhere. I think they're all caught (laughs) up and there's no inventory to be had anywhere. Um, okay. So we're going to deep, this is obviously an eye, eye sight chore. I, I sight, whatever <laughs> I'm trying to say. An eye test. Yes. An eye test, um, which I will fail. Uh, but you can, this is definitely something that you can take a look at in our report a little bit more closely in terms of quarter over quarter and year over year changes. But the net of it is these kind of green and red arrows. So like I said, mm-hmm. cost per clicks are going up. We're going to take a deep dive into this uh, into this webinar in a second. But CPCs are going up, click through rates are going down, ROA is going down, and then conversion is kind of a mixed bag between sponsored product and sponsored brand ads. So, like I said, we're going to take a quick deep dive uh, in a second here. But this is overall the quarter in a nutshell. As I mentioned, so there was an impact to ad spend given that Prime Day did move from July to October. So, uh, you know, spend was still up an 18% year over year, but, you know, much more significant August and September, 76% and 89%. Uh, So, you know, really October is going to be an interesting month to see how Prime Day has affected ad spends. We already seeing, you know, a big jump in the two days of Prime Day, but we'll be recapping that next quarter. And uh, as I mentioned, so CPCs have returned to to normalized levels uh, this quarter. So it kind of took a dip in Q2 as people ran out of stock, but as as inventory is kind of back on track and people have their strategies back in place, uh, we're a little bit more on track. So a 20% jump quarter over quarter, but not very significant year over year. And then in terms of categories affected, so the pet categories, the, the blue line is, is 2020 in terms of the CPC. And you can see this year that the CPC stayed relatively, you know, constant. So it's really been not super affected by COVID. Uh, Kira, do you have any thoughts on categories that, you know, category trends this quarter at all? Yeah, I think that um, to uh, electronics were, was a big theme. So Laptops, as you mentioned, PlayStation and Nintendo Switch, they're always top up there with uh, amongst the most searched for items. Um, Back to school campaigns, which you already touched on before around USBs. Um, One of our clients in the consumer electronics category ran a back to school campaign that was, uh, you know, this is a big theme. And looking at the, the top, 30 most popular deals that um, shoppers purchased on, on Prime Day, that certainly came through in the in the data there as well. So electronics were a big beneficiary of um, for this year in Q3. Great. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about ROAS. So sponsor brand dropped significantly from their Q2 high this quarter. So um, sponsor products also dropped a lot as well. This returned sponsored brand ads to a lower ROAS and sponsored product ads, which decreased 7%. Uh, Kira, do you have any kind of anecdotes around this ROAS here? Yeah, this this is in in line with what we're seeing across our accounts. So one thing to remember here is that sponsored brand video is also considered a, a sponsored brand ad type. And sponsored brand ads have ASIN targeting features as well, which is is unique to that ad type. A type, and so we see one of the themes is Amazon's urging sellers to invest more in brand visibility in these sort of higher, um, higher funnel ad types and targeting types. So this makes a lot of sense to us, and and gives us some indication to the direction that Amazon's going to be moving as well. Awesome. So let's talk a little bit about uh, click-through rates. So while Q2 saw click-through rate for sponsored product ads and sponsored brand ads nearly converge for the first time, we saw kind of a a more expected variance return in in Q3. 
In general, we see a lower click-through rate for sponsored product campaigns using product attribute tar targeting. As more advertisers use this targeting option, we may expect overall click-through uh, to decrease. Carrie, what are your thoughts mm -hmm. on, on click-through rates this quarter? Yeah, um, when I spoke with Stefan about this, uh, it sort of was in line with, with what we had expected with the additional placements coming through, like you said, um, mm -hmm. some even at the bottom of the page with that related brands widget, I believe it is. So we, we just can't expect click-through rates to be as high as uh, through those um, placements as when they're at the top of uh, search results. Right. And then uh, daily ad spend. So, you know, an upward trajectory as more brands re rely heavily on e-commerce advertising, the brand average daily spend continues to rise as well. Uh, both ads have seen a significant year over year increase, you know, 100% for sponsored brand ads. Mm. To your point, Carrie, about a little bit of encouragement to continue the, you know, holistic branding there. And then 42% for sponsored product ad spend. Um, any thoughts there before I move on to uh, conversion rates? No, nope. good. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so for the third straight quarter, sponsored brand ads have shown a higher conversion rate than sponsored product ads, but the gap has shrunk uh, to a nearly insignificant level. So this is also kind of an interesting trend here. This is where you know conversion for sponsored product increased and and brand decreased. Uh, mm. So. You know, again, you know, interesting to see how these things uh, continue down the path this next quarter. And then uh, cost per acquisition. So there's increases, but still lower than year over year. So sponsored brand ad CPA increased 28%, uh, while sponsored product ad only increased 8%. And this puts sponsored product ads at a more cost efficient level when compared with sponsored brand ads. So each show some improvement. Um, but you know again this is you know q2 seems to be quite an anomaly in terms of performance uh, as things seem to be leveling off a little bit more as we get into the quarter all right so kiri what what should we look out for in the months ahead yeah this is always always fun to spitball a little bit and and some of the themes of of what we've seen just in in q3 come out here new advertising inventory this is where Amazon is is the third largest advertising platform behind Facebook and Google, but it's still very distant third to Facebook and Google. This is a really profitable business for Amazon. They're able to monetize the core elements of their existing retail business, and they have a unique, very unique vantage point into what we're doing as shoppers, who's in our household, how frequently we uh, buy our toilet paper and things like that. So this is just, this is a no brainer for Amazon to continue in a very aggressive land grab as they've done with retail fulfillment services, cloud, cloud computing, things like that. This is a, a going to be a huge business for Amazon already is. So to that, to that extent, where else are they going to go to fuel this huge need that brands and advertisers have to get in front of Amazon shoppers. Um, the, the Amazon's going to be expanding their inventory across um, OTT or television, um, Alexa, Alexa voice assistant ecosystem. I think that that's a really interesting opportunity, although they've um, said on a number of occasions they're not going to monetize Alexa. Um, we, have, uh, I think that there's a very good case to make where they will do that. Um, Twitch, Amazon posts and live, these are currently organic, um, marketing channels that could be monetized in the future and, and are building up some strong momentum with brand brands organically that I think we could see some, um, advertising layering in on top of that. To that end, I mean, what we're talking about with that, those uh, new advertising inventory options is a different type of, of advertising where we need creative um, assets. We need video assets. We need audio assets. We need live video talent. This is a new world that brands will want to start preparing for now. Um, and I think as it currently stands with sponsored brand video, 
and um, doing live video and things like that. What we've what we've seen amongst our clients is that it doesn't need to be overcomplicated, expensive, or studio produced content, but getting in early and figuring out what works, whether that is something as simple as testimonials, um, text overlays on 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 very simple video assets. Um, just start the need. The need is there to start experimenting now, um, rather than putting it off and thinking we need to have you know this big studio budget and it needs to be a whole whole project. So that's my recommendation to everyone there. Bringing DSP and PPC together, uh, huge opportunity here for Amazon to bring some of those enterprise level targeting options and placement options to the mass market advertiser and we're already seeing some of that in um in the works with targeting options that have been brought over from dsp over to to ams and amazon advertising and then finally this this point here sponsored products will still take the majority of budget for most brands this is the this is the golden goose of amazon advertising it's where the best return comes from it's a quick it's it's uh, a quick hit for many brands and there's there's no real sign of of that slowing anytime soon what was we're still seeing this uh strategy work really well which is um focusing on on sponsored products and then once that option has been uh capped out then looking to layer in more demand on top of that but you need to get that sponsored product um, foundation right to in order to capitalize on these other more interesting um, top of funnel ad placements and strategies. Mm -hmm. I love what you said about how, um, you know, you don't have to have this big budget and do things you just need to kind of test and learn some what's mm. working and that's that's kind of the, one of the fun things about e-commerce in my opinion is that i always have said like it's a bunch of tactics that add up to your overall holistic strategy and so there's a lot of opportunities here to test and learn and there's a good example that we're going to talk about as a tee up our prime day insights uh, mm -hmm. it would be a good webinar if we you know didn't talk about prime day which just happened last week kiri did you buy anything uh interesting on prime day I bought nothing on Prime Day. I honest, I, you know what I did, and this is um, this is a preview to what we're going to talk about. Is I sat and watched live video, yeah. and I looked at what other people were buying. But what about yourself? Did you did you get any deals? Um, I have been, I've had my eye on a Segway for like two years now. And I thought, um, I finally pulled the trigger. There's this kid in my neighborhood. He must be like 13 that rides his Segway with his, uh, AirPods going around doing his schoolwork, I think, or conference calls. And so that kind of pushed me over the edge that if a 13 year old, a 13 year old could do it, then I, <laughs> then I could do it. So That's you, might, awesome. I love you it. might catch me on my next conference call on my Segway. I might, I might post that on LinkedIn. We'll see. Wow. I'll wait for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so Prime Day participation, a mixed bag. Uh, you know, there is a lot of lack of details and ability to plan, uh, which led a lot of brands kind of to opt out. Um, there's a lot of complexity. So, you know, one of the frustrations was that Amazon didn't give a lot of details when they moved the, the date out to October. Um, you know, this is kind of their MO. They, they do it for competitive reasons. You know, as soon as they announce a date and any kind of details, all the competitors will jump on the bandwagon, which is what happened, as we know. So Walmart, Target, Best Buy, like everyone has had their deal days. Um, you know, brands still had concerns over inventory and then just category specific participation was, was preeminent. Um, Carrie, do you have any thoughts mm -hmm. here? I know you wrote a nice Forbes article about, about Prime Day. Yeah, this was, a, it, it's interesting. This poll uh, was back in April 20. Uh, so, and, and the perspective seemed to change over time, the later it got with, with Prime Day. So initially it, I was certainly getting that, that feedback from clients as well. Like, well, you know, it's too, it's too hard to say what we're going to do for Prime Day. We might just opt out. We might do less than what, what we did last year, but coming it closer towards the event, that perspective did shift a little bit. What really, as you said, big inventory issues, a lot of delays with Amazon actually receiving inventory to their warehouses. Um, 
a concern around reloading between Prime Day and Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and to what extent that would be possible. So as the event got closer and certainly once it was announced, the brands that felt comfortable that they were going to be able to reload and that they had sufficient inventory, those brands often pushed lean quite hard into into Prime Day. And we certainly saw um, in our data um, that the brands who leaned hard into the event ran some deals, ran ads, and also promoted those deals to their email list, to social media, and really publicized those. Those saw a um, multi-fold improvement in in sales over the period versus those who sort of uh, dipped their toe in, so to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have some early Prime Day results. Uh, Average spends week over week were significantly increased with day one much higher than day day two. This is consistent with last year as brands leaned in on the first day to capture uh, customers early. And CPC for branded search team search terms seem particularly high this year due to increased competitive bidding. One large CPG brand that we studied saw their brand terms CPCs double year over year. Mm. So aggressive. Um, but anyway, we have some more data coming out on Prime Day uh, as well. So pretty pictures. These are always the the way to go as we wrap up here. Uh, so. You know, I think you and I are really positive on this live stream and influencers trend. Uh, if you look at China, they're way ahead of us here. And this is really prevalent in terms of e-commerce selling live stream. Uh, of course, this there's a little error here. Something went wrong here. Please try again later if this is not without you know error. But here's the thing that I think is so amazing about Amazon is that even during the pandemic and COVID, they still innovated and they still mm. had this whole component of live stream and influencers. This also, another example, this Vitamix, um, I think this is a Vitamix influencer. Some of these were pre-recorded. So then under the pop-up, it was a prime day deal. It would just pop up as prime day. So there was kind of Mm. this mixture of some that were just static, you know, uh, you know, feeds that then they just put into this whole mix. And then some were actually truly live since you did so much Mm. uh, watching Carrie, what was any observations from you on it? Oh, there was, yeah, there was a, they ran the gamut of super boring, uninspiring live videos um, to really engaging videos that were very like personality driven and had really thought through their content, had really um, specific uh, insights on the products that they were promoting. So I'm, I'm certainly going to do a bit more of a deep dive into what worked really well, um, what was, you know, how to do this right but um it's as you're pointing out here through these illustrations it's not just brands that are doing the the live videos and it's not just amazon studio produced videos either they've got this real influencer component that hasn't been as strong in the past as it was this year there was a lot of influencer videos and there was a really new and vibrant tie-in with the prime exclusive deals that were run as well. Um, and that's the, that's where the magic happens is, is where you have that really engaging influencer content with that tied in with those exclusive time limited deals. Um, I'm looking forward to digging into what kind of results that had, because that seems to be where the magic is and where Amazon's been pushing for at least like 18 months now. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is also just one of those areas like, you know, are, is your content ready? That's kind of why I put that little question there mm. because, hey, do you have influencers? How are they helping you promote your Prime Day deals? Like this is another thing to yeah. think about for even this holiday season. How can you leverage any kind of content out here, there that you have? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There was some, there was some interesting ones. I watched a, um, like a live workout video with, uh, that was a Puma, um, -hmm. video and it was two trainers from Hollywood. They didn't, they actually had no product tie in until the end of a 40 minute workout video. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's necessarily the right move. I also watched a, um, a live stream of um, Kristen Cavallari, a cookbook author, and she was cooking in her kitchen 
some of the recipes from her cookbook. And then she also has her own line of like mixing bowls and things like that, that she was um, promoting through her live stream video. So there's, once you start thinking creatively about this and, and what, what kind of uh, affiliates you can have, um, you know, promoting your products, it opens up a whole new window of opportunity for, mm-hmm. for brands. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens during that, um, you know, cyber week holiday shopping. I mean, I know it's kind of like the prolonged time frame now, but you know, Amazon is learning from what they did during this prime day and they'll apply it towards, you know, future. So what people are mm-hmm. clicking on, what people are watching, I wouldn't be surprised mm-hmm. if they add little like buttons, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down to see what kind of starts, you know, making their way mm-hmm. to the top. So we'll see. It seems like a little mm-hmm. bit Facebooky in terms of some of the, like the way that things were popping up on the screen, but <clears throat> that'll be that'll be a really interesting deep dive to do. Um, just to call out to SodaStream here, you know, Curie talked about how this is a time to test and learn. Amazon's a great platform, and they tested every single coupon for Prime Day, which I thought was really <laughs> fun because there is a lot of different kinds of coupons. Everything from you know a typical coupon to like a Prime Day deal with a badge. Um, so you know, I'm really looking forward to you know hopefully learning a little bit more about the coupon performance. So these are the these are the coupons in execution. So some you have to actually check mm. a box to to redeem it. And so we know that there's some fall off that people don't actually check the box for that, um, but you still kind of get credit for the promotional message, um, everything to this, you know, prime exclusive deal. So anyway, there's, there's a lot of different kind of coupon options here, but just the really main point here is that this brand really took the opportunity to test and learn for prime day and probably apply those learnings towards Q4, which is a really great approach. And then um, last slide here is, uh, you know, something that I think is also interesting is this execution of uh, for the spike made it a lot harder to price match across the internet. So Best Buy was selling the same bike, um, but because of the way that the execution of the, of the coupon was, where it, it was redeemed at checkout, which makes the pricing mm. a little bit harder to understand as a consumer. But you know, the checkout it it dis, it's displayed after the cart. That makes it a lot harder um, for other retailers to capture that and automatically price match. So just something to keep in mind, uh, this test and learn mentality during Prime Day was one way that some brands went into the thinking uh, to learn what they could for Q4. And with that, that's a wrap. We're gonna head into a further deep day, uh, a further deep dive. And thank you, Kiri, for your time. I know it's super late your time. So appreciate you staying up with us. And uh, thanks, Melissa. We'll look forward to more insights to come. Hello, everyone. I uh, just want to make sure that, that everyone can hear me now. But um, but my name is Riku. I will be kind of going through a deeper Prime Day deep dive with my colleague, Matt McGrory. Um, but first off, I just wanted to kind of preface and say that we are going to have a live Q&A session towards the end of this, uh, this session. So if you have any questions, type them up in the chat. We're going to aggregate those and then kind of go over them one by one at the very end. So with this, with that said, there's been a lot of good data and kind of overall trends that Melissa and then Kiri um, presented today, but Matt and I are gonna kind of go do a little bit of a deeper dive and show you nuances and then differences in like CPC, different ad types, uh, metrics, and even kind of category nuances that we saw. So the first thing that we wanna to talk to you about is cost per click and how they trended out in 2020 versus this seven day period, which we call the lead in as well as uh, 2019 as well. So year over year CPC inflation has been a constant on Amazon, as most of you know, paid search just becomes increasingly competitive. And as a result of brands, you know, spending more on paid search, the overall cost structures are going up. Uh, So as a whole, CPCs were up year over year. But for this slide, we also wanted to look at sponsored product versus sponsored brand specifically. Um, So when we look at sponsored product, CPCs were up higher this year than they were on sponsored brand compared to 2019, which is really kind of suggesting this is where brands leaned in in 2020 was kind of making sure that they're winning on sponsored product. Even though you know sponsored brand did see a, a decent increase, um, we definitely saw sponsored product had the most kind of competitive pressures across the board. Then compared to the preceding seven days before Prime Day here, Prime Day 1 and Prime Day 2 CPC are both up about 25 to 30% compared to that leading period. 
the interesting thing is that this is a higher step up to what we saw in 2019, where we only saw a 22% increase on Prime Day versus that leading period. So this just simply means that advertisers were more aggressive in kind of stepping into Prime Day this year. Um, another way to kind of interpret this data is that the CPC peak that we saw in Prime Day 2019 was about the same CPC as it was in the lead-in period this year. So you have this kind of ratcheting up effect of CPCs, uh, and we kind of expect that trend to, to hold true th throughout Q4. Uh, it's kind of the new normal as we're expecting as, um, as shoppers kind of more uh, kind of extend their, their shopping throughout the entirety of the quarter rather than condensing it into like a one or two week period as they did with Prime Day last year. Yeah, so it, it, this points out to just an overall more, I guess, aggressive or a higher level of competition in 2020. You know, this is kind of kind of what we're, we've been anticipating going into Q4. There's kind of two ways to also look at this is what does this CPC inflation look like on essential versus non-essential categories? So for brands and non-essential categories where they were basically dark earlier on the year, it, it kind of creates increased pressures for them to hit their numbers in Q4. And in order to do so, they're willing to spend more aggressively to kind of get their products in front of shoppers. So that's going to have a pretty significant impact on CPCs especially for Prime Day, but also throughout the rest of Q4 and going into Cyber 5. But even in these essential categories where they did have, um, you know, they were able to sell their products early on in the year, um, there are a ton of shoppers kind of channel shifting as, you know, all the news have kind of pointed out that the acceleration of e-com adoption uh, has been one of the, the consequences of, of COVID. Um, but essentially, you know, these brands are, are kind of looking at the customer or the lifetime value of these customers and, and willing to bid a little bit more aggressively to capture them as they're, you know, kind of coming into the e-commerce space. Cool. So next slide, we also wanted to kind of look at what does ROAS look like this year versus this lead-in period and also versus 2019. So as it, it just overall, ROAS and Prime Day outperformed the lead-in period by a large margin, which is to be expected, right? We generally kind of see this lead-in period as more of like the exploratory or research phase where, you know, shoppers aren't necessarily there to, to convert or buy certain products. They're there to really kind of, you know, shop around and, and see what kind of deals they might, they might be buying in this prime day period. Uh, the interesting thing, though, was we did see a bigger uh, dip last year on sponsored brand in 2019, this little valley right here. Uh, whereas this year is a little bit more steady, uh, but we do see across the board that the, the sponsored product ROAS was much, much higher last year than it was this year, as, as the data is pointing out. Uh, one another interesting data point is that, um, that this whole lead-in period ROAS was 62% higher in 2019 than it was in 2020, which is a pretty monumental decrease if you look at this year. Uh, I think this can be partly explained by the lead in CPC being 23% higher this year, but I think really at the heart of it is kind of how shoppers are approaching Q4 and you know how they're really shopping around. Uh, so I think timing of Prime Day has large has the the biggest kind of uh, impact on this. So the lower lead in ROAS in 2020 could indicate that shoppers are kind of banking on doing their shoppers throughout the entirety of the quarter rather than kind of condensing it into that you know one to two week Prime Day period as we saw in 2019. Of course, that kind of at the heart of it is how aggressively are brands spending this year. So when we're looking at what did um, overall spend look like in 2020 versus 2019, you can see that across the board, you know, where uh, our, our brands and the, the data sets spent, spent way more on average uh, this year. Um, again, when brands are spending more, they generally bid more aggressively to win, you know, a higher percentage of total impressions available. That in itself drives up the cost per click structure. And that's really kind of at the heart of it here. The interesting thing, though, is uh, when you look at that Prime Day 1, which would be this first dot right here versus Prime Day 2, the overall spend was lower on Prime Day 2, even though the cost per click was higher. And what this is su suggesting for us, at least, is that brands were just as aggressive on day two, but they probably ran out of funds and they had to really kind of cut back on their budgets and how much they were willing to spend on that second day. So kind of a, a natural takeaway or recommendation would be if you have uh, it available, look at day parting to possibly pause or even reduce bids for the first part of the day to make sure you kind of maximize that campaign flight time throughout the, the peak events, especially going into Cyber 5. Next up, we wanted to just give you a, a kind of a, a specific example within a category. So this is in toys and games and it kind of the, all the data points that we've shown so far, we wanted to benchmark how toys and games did against all of those. 
So when we look at toys and games, they had a way more aggressive prime day average daily spend than what we saw in categories combined. This ramp up from, you know, this preceding or the leading period to prime day was way, way more significant than what we see saw on average across all categories. Um, and it kind of makes sense given the nature of toys and games. You know, a lot of shoppers are there to, to really shop for deals. Um, when we look at this ROAS, the ROAS trend was, was pretty similar, but there was a, a bigger dip in this kind of lead in period uh, right, the couple of days right before it than what we saw uh, across the board. And in overall kind of cost per click started ratcheting up in this, uh, this one to two day period right before Prime Day. So really kind of the net of it is shop, uh, brands really started to kind of accelerate their investment in the, the one to two days right before Prime Day. Whereas the shopper behavior there kind of um, indicates that, you know, shoppers weren't really there to convert at that point. They were there to really do research. However, you know, we don't recommend just going completely dark, given that the ROAS takes a dip here. It's really important to kind of make sure that your brand is, is, uh, is visible and, and shoppers can kind of find your products as they're really there to do the research and then ultimately buy your products during Prime Day. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm going to take it over from here. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Matt McGrory. I uh, work with Riku at PackView. Uh, so this pet category, this pet case study for the lead in period and then prime day and then initial lead out period. Uh, this is a category that's near and dear to my heart. My dog is laying on my feet right now. Uh, this is a category that I personally work on with a few clients. A couple main takeaways here is, uh, as you can see, their top left chart average daily spend, your fairly predictable, very pretty short lead in period there. Uh, we generally hear from Amazon the pretty standard, I'm sure you've heard it as well, that two week lead in period that they generally recommend, where they, they suggest that brands and advertisers start to ramp up their spend as far as two weeks out before the event. Um, we have seen pretty much year after year that that lead in period seems a little bit too long. So as you can see in the top left chart, uh, a lot of a lot of brands are just not really ramping up their spend significantly that far out before the event. Uh, but one thing to note here is both for average daily spend and then at the bottom, the two charts in the bottom, ROAS and cost per click, just the really stark difference in the before and after. Um, you know, we generally do see a halo effect coming out of Prime Day when it's traditionally in July. So we see elevated spend, uh, increased cost per click and increased competition in general. Uh, but because Prime Day was in October this year and pushed back due to COVID and it's so close to Cyber Friday and just general Q4 holiday shopping in general, uh, as you can see there, average daily spend started starting and remaining at a really high new baseline. We did expect this to happen going into the event, but it's just really still surprising to see such a stark difference in the before and after. And then going down to look at ROAS on the bottom left, you had your ROAS even in the few days leading into, so in Q4, in the month of October, ROAS pretty reliably above $3. Obviously it dipped significantly with the corresponding increase on the chart on the right to that spike in cost per click, but just a, a really, really stark, pretty surprising, both decrease in ROAS and increase in cost per click coming out of the event, uh, specifically for cost per click on the bottom right chart, pretty consistently reliably around the 150 to 170 range uh, coming out of the event after it spiked up to close to $5, uh, pretty consistently remaining at or sometimes above $3. So in some cases, cost per click nearly doubling over the case of five days heading into Q4. Uh, this is something that we have seen come back down to earth just ever so slightly the past two, three days. Uh, but uh, given the fact that it is now Prime Day was in Q4 this year, we're just believing that it's really the start of this earlier, quicker ramp up to heavier Q4 competition. So next couple slides, we will talk about some observations from Prime Day, some key takeaways, and then finish up before Q&A with what we think are the big learnings and what you can do for upcoming Cyber 5, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, um, somehow just a little bit over a month away from now. Uh, so first and foremost, first bullet point here, sounds really obvious, but we saw some pretty strong and pretty pervasive preferential treatment for ASINs with some sort of Prime Day promotion. Uh, that sounds really obvious, but what this means is uh, we had multiple brands that were non-promotional, so they were not funding any promo for their ASINs, but decided that they still wanted to invest really heavily in the day and show up in a big way. Uh, we saw quite a few of those brands have a really hard time reaching top of search. Uh, one case study, one example is actually a pet brand uh, that I work with. Uh, on any given week leading into Prime Day, about 50, 40 to 50 percent of their weekly impressions came from top of search placements, whether it be sponsored brand or sponsored product. 
uh, during the event, they flipped from about 50% of impressions in top of search to about 5%, and almost 90% of their impressions switched to product detail page placements. Um, even with a you know significant increase in cost per click, both bid and actualized CPC, very robust, healthy budgets. We were using bid modifiers, uh, just saw really, really strong headwinds uh, for reaching that top of search placement without a promotion to the point where it almost became impossible. On the flip side of that, had some brands that were heavily promotional. They were funding Prime Day deals, and they were very easily able to reach those top of search placements with a much smaller increase compared to the pet brand of increase in cost per click for before, during, after event. And so the, the observation here is this is a hypothesis at this point without confirmation from Amazon directly. Uh, but we really truly believe that Amazon's algorithm, whether intentionally or unintentionally, is giving a lot of preference to prime only deal ASINs during the prime day event. So something to look out for um, heading into Black Friday and Cyber Monday. Second one is very uh, closely related to the first call out, which is ASINs without those promos were often relegated to uh, away from search and top of search to product detail page placements. Generally, there's a lot more inventory, ad inventory available on product detail page placements, but on our experience, they almost always drive lower click through, lower conversion, lower ROAS. They're just a less premium placement when we know that about 70% of purchases come from page one of search results. Uh, that was a big shift this year where if you were not promotional, pretty much across the board, you had a really hard time staying away from or preventing yourself from being pushed to those product detail page placements. Second or third one down, uh, again, sounds really obvious here, but the, the call out here is should say both Prime Day deals and sponsored ads, sponsored products and brands were displayed within search results. Uh, the biggest change this year, it wasn't a massive change uh, in terms of customer experience, but what it meant in performance was pretty big. We'll get into it in one or two slides, which was the addition of a today's deals widget that was actually directly below the sponsored brand unit and somehow ironically above the list of sponsor, the row of sponsored products, um, ads and organic placements. So uh, some pretty aggressive site merch changes in the actual search experience itself directly from Amazon. Number four here, uh, Amazon actually protected in inventory completely for some Prime member promotions, um, essentially making the item not able to be purchased unless you were logged into a Prime account. That was pretty surprising to us. We figured that the best way to drive Prime adoption was to show non-Prime members what savings they could be, you know, having with a Prime membership. So um, interesting uh, thing that we observed, number four there, is that some items and some deals were not even able to be purchased without a Prime membership. And then fifth one here, a little bit of a smaller one, uh, but in the sponsored brand ad unit, you can see in the screenshot in the top right, uh, a lot of sponsored brand ad units, even though they had selected featured ASINs, they were lacking those featured ASINs in the creative and it wasn't badged with a prime day deal. So that was a small change that we are interested to see if they will continue based on their results heading into Cyber 5. All right, a couple key learnings that tie back to those observations. Uh, and I'm gonna speed up here just a bit so we have time for Q&A. Uh, but first and foremost, uh, we, we've seen that it's very difficult, if not impossible, to appear in those top of search placements, regardless of how much you spend uh, on a cost per click or budget basis without some sort of big deal or promotion, uh, whether that be intentional where Amazon is artificially pushing only deal ASINs to top of search, or it could also be a symptom of their algorithm uh, uh, correcting for um, relevancy, so uh, making sure that they're only promoting ASINs that are a high click-through, high conversion, so it could be intentional or unintentional. Uh, learning here is take that into account. Some brands that are not planning on being promotional during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, just may want to take that into consideration, knowing that it's probably going to be very difficult to reach those premium high efficiency placements. Uh, number two, this is a really important one that we always recommend, which is have a contingency plan. Uh, you know, you know your budgets, you know your cost per click bids on a historical basis going in, obviously, but really have a firm plan in place for if you do blow through your budgets, like we saw, especially on day one this year when lots of our clients actually blew through their budgets by like 10 a.m. East or West Coast time, uh, to make sure that you have a contingency plan and also that you're using those bid modifiers if you are promotional to really push for those premium top of search placements. Number three, this is a recommendation that I'm sure Amazon would kill us for recommending to you, which is if you are not planning on being promotional during Cyber 5, based on these learnings and results we've seen from Prime Day, maybe consider pulling back slightly on your the aggressiveness of your cost per click bids, your overall budget, uh, knowing that you may be facing some pretty strong headwinds trying to reach that really premium high efficiency top of search placement. Uh, if you're not planning on being promotional, obviously, if you are planning on funding deals and promos, that recommendation is it goes out the window and we definitely recommend pushing for those premium top of search placements. 
Number four there, uh, we've seen huge success customizing your taglines and your creative for both sponsored brands. And then also we didn't list it here, but sponsored display and brand stores. Uh, so we have seen a huge spike in both click through and conversion, and then just overall net sales coming from ad units that were customized uh, with prime day or deal slash holiday specific messaging. So we can't recommend that highly enough heading into the rest of Q4. And then last one, uh, number five here, we will show this in the next slide, I believe, in terms of what the site merge experience was, but Amazon's most likely going to continue prioritizing that today's deals or, you know, Black Friday deals widget uh, at the very top of search. So make sure that you are accounting for that. What this essentially means is that because for most screens, you're pushing sponsored products completely below the fold, that sponsored brand ad unit at the top of the page is going to become more competitive, but even more critical and important to appear in. So here's a quick example here. The ones on the left are showing the, the standard uh, historical deal experience in search. You can see the badges there in that kind of red maroon color below some ASINs where it says limited time deal. That same treatment was live for Prime Day this year, but the new big change was, it's a little hard to see on the screenshot on the right, you see your sponsored brand ad unit at the top there. Directly below that is a new widget that was completely merchandised by Amazon. This was not something that you could purchase placement in and it was dynamically fed based on the ASINs within the product category for whatever search term you were searching. So it was dynamic and it was not able to be purchased. Uh, but this was a placement that on most screens, as you can see, this is a, an extended screenshot. It really pushed all sponsored product placements below the fold and especially pushed all organic listings below the fold. So uh, we expect that Amazon probably had good success with this since a lot of people are probably finding deals from their own search terms that they're proactively entering. Um, we expect them to continue this. This means a couple things. One, sponsored brand is going to be critically important going forward, even though it's expensive. If you want to show up and feature your deals on these big days, really, really important to be there in that top slot. And then second big call out here is, as you can see, this is even an extended uh, screenshot of multiple scrolls. Uh, you don't see organic search results until row four here, if you include sponsored brand, and it's pretty hard to see even with this larger screenshot. Um, so it's a lot of brands, we, we often hear, oh, well, I have the number one or number two or three organic placement. I don't really need to purchase sponsored product placements because I'm already showing above, above the fold or near the fold. Uh, this new treatment during these tent pole days during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Prime Day, it's really forcing you even more so than before to participate in either sponsored brand or sponsored product placements. All right, and then I'm sure you guys are all wondering what this means in terms of Q4. Q4 is upon us. Black Friday is just over a month away. Uh, so first and foremost, sounds really obvious, but start as early as possible to give yourself, yourself time to test and learn, both learning how to mitigate some of the new issues or new learnings from the new uh, site experience that we just discussed. And then also, if you are launching new campaigns that are deal-specific campaigns, make sure that you give them plenty of time to build up their relevance in the algorithm to make sure that they have an easier time of surfacing for top placements. Number two, update your keywords to reach new customers. I'm sure everyone's seen the studies that this is probably going to be by far the biggest Q4 for e-com in e-commerce history. Lots of new customers being forced to shop online for the first time. And so you're going to be seeing an influx and a continued influx even past the first COVID spike in March and April of net new customers who are coming to search online for the first time. What this means is you're likely to see a large number of new customers searching brand agnostic terms. So what we call non-brand generic category terms. So make sure that you're showing up for some of those high volume terms to reach those net new customers and then bring them into your brand as a repeat loyalist customer. Number three, um, I'm biased because I work for a, you know, a tech solution provider, but I really do think that tools and technology is going to be absolutely critical in staying ahead of the competition. Uh, you saw how much the cost per clicks increased, how much the spend increased. You've seen how, how fast paced everything is on Amazon these days. So I really do believe that tools are going to be really critical to make sure that you're not up at midnight changing your bids and budgets when Cyber Monday goes live. You're not you know, constantly making bid optimizations manually while things are changing quickly. I do think that tools and tech is really important to stay ahead of the competition. Number four, uh, prepare to increase bids on keywords where your products drop on organic rankings. So this is essentially the call out I made on the last slide. As organic rankings are pushed down the page, we know that it's gonna be a lot more important to bid aggressively to appear in either sponsor brand or first row sponsor products. And then number five here, test out new ad type and new targeting opportunities. What this means specifically is um, across the board for all clients and all brands for Prime Day, we saw sponsor brand video drove by far the best performance. So if you're able to learn how to use sponsor brand video well, do it now. And then number 
number one, number two, they're targeting opportunities, things like new product targeting for sponsored display campaigns, where in the past you can only target one or a few products at once. Now you can target an entire product category. Definitely recommend that you test those out now and have those learnings and know what works well for your specific brand heading into Cyber 5 Peak. All right, I think that is it. Uh, like we mentioned, thank you guys all for, for taking the time. I'm sorry we don't have a, more time, it's about five minutes here, but uh, we now just have open Q&A. Please use the uh, chat feature at the bottom of your screen. I think that we probably answered every question in the presentation with the... Uh, uh. <laughs> with the, the fact that we're not getting a lot of questions. That was really awesome content, you guys. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> we're, we're too <laughs> thorough. You, <laughs> There's no, no questions. We've covered it all. That's, that's cool. I mean, we're, we're around, you guys can contact, uh, you can contact me, Melissa at packview.com or sales at packview.com or one of our aliases to, to get a hold of us. Uh, we've got lots of content for you to download on our website. Um, but you know, if, if there's nothing else, then we'll give you three minutes back to your, to your time and, uh, happy Q4 everyone. Hope, uh, I'll, I'll have to send you guys a picture of myself on my segue as we're, uh, <laughs> doing conference calls for our next one. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank All right. You. Thanks everyone. All right. Thanks.